All right, so we're going to look at an example here, coming back to the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, but with a bit of a twist, okay? And the twist is coming from the fact that we don't just have x up here as the limit of integration. We have an x squared, okay? So this isn't just FTC. This is fundamental theorem of calculus plus the chain rule, okay? Let's take a minute to understand exactly why. Now, first thing that you might be tempted to do here is apply the second part of the fundamental theorem, right? Get the anti, you know, just work this out. You know, plug in the limits, plug in the x squared, plug in the 2, get the function, and then take the derivative as usual. And, yeah, you could do that, uh, except we might not remember an antiderivative for the natural log. Um, the, the right technique for finding an antiderivative of the natural log is, is integration by parts, something you don't see until chapter 6, which is typically part of Calc 2 at most places. Uh, so, all right. We did, we did see an example. If you will look way back, I think, in the product rule section of the derivatives, you will find an example where we took the derivative of something that came out to be exactly the natural log. So yeah, if you can go back, find that example, you could do it that way. But the point is not to do it that way. The point is to find a better way to do this, right? And the right way to do this is to say, well, first of all, if we had, say, just g of x equal to the integral from 2 to x of log t dt, well, then we know that g prime of x it's just the natural log of x, right? That's fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. Exactly, right? We have a constant, we have an x, we have some function of t, we just replace t by x, we have the derivative. Done. Well, okay, we have that, but also we know something else. We know that f of x is g of x squared. This is the key. The key is realizing that what's going on here is we're replacing this x by some other function of x, right? And that's just composition, right? <clears throat> so this is g of, oh, I don't know, let's call it uh, maybe h, h of x, right? Where h of x equals x squared. Well, we don't want to take derivatives of things like this. That's chain rule, right? We learned that way back in chapter 2. f prime of x is, let's focus over here. Let's write out the chain rule formula. Chain rule formula is, that's g prime at h of x times h prime of x. Okay. Well, what's g prime of h of x? g prime of x is here, so g prime of h of x is just the natural log of h of x. And h of x is x squared. h prime, well, we know what h prime is. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay? So notice that we, we still didn't need to do any integration here, right? There are no anti it's, just, it's a derivative problem. It's not an antiderivative problem, it's a derivative problem. Uh, this is the point in the course where you have to be real careful to keep track of when are you doing antiderivatives, when are you doing derivatives, right? You're seeing them both at the same time now, and you, you just have to start paying attention and thinking carefully, or you'll get yourself mixed up. Okay, so this is the idea, right? If you see something in that limit of integration, other than x, you see some function of x, there's probably going to be chain rule involved, right? So slow down, be careful, identify functions if you have to, like we did here, and then you'll have the answer, okay? We're going to move on, we'll look at a couple more examples, and then we'll see what the next thing we have in store is.